Hello good people, Eber here with Hardware Connects, and this is Intel's Hades Canyon NUC. For those of you who don't know what a NUC is, it stands for Next Unit of Computing, and if you're familiar with the Skull Canyon NUC that was launched a few years back, Intel really defined the future of modern desktop computing with those units. I mean, I've taken a look at countless pre-built gaming systems in the past here on the channel, and I've never seen anything as compact or innovative as the Skull Canyon NUC or even this Hades Canyon NUC. Um, and uh, it's just it's just mind blowing considering the amount of power uh, Intel has been able to cram inside a chassis that can comfortably uh, fit your palms. Intel is offering these units as bare bones kits, so you have to populate your own choice for memory and storage. And the sample that I have over here costs a thousand dollars, which is an expensive investment. Uh, but if you're looking to save a few hundred dollars, you can actually pick up the lower tier version of the Hades Canyon NUC. Uh, the only thing is that it comes with a slightly uh, less spec Vega GPU uh, with 24 compute units and a slightly lower clock speed. Uh, so that's something uh, to keep in mind. So let's take an in-depth look at Hades Canyon and put it through spaces compared to some other bare bones PCs from the past and also come up with a unique solution uh, that I could use or a unique use, use case scenario that I could use this for here in the office or perhaps in my living room. I don't know, we'll come up with something somewhere in this video. And uh, of course we will uh, come to a conclusion as to whether or not it's worth a thousand dollars, but also uh, you know, find out who this is really targeted towards right after this. The new Masterkeys MK750 keyboard comes with a comfortable magnetic wrist rest, beautiful RGB light bar on the perimeter and perky lighting control with a variety of Cherry MX switches and a bottom type C connection. Cooler Master doing it right. Check it out below. All right, so taking a look at the physical appearance of this unit, I've got to say I'm really impressed. Intel has taken the stealth and minimalist approach here with the exterior design. There are no fancy or aggressive gamery elements throughout the chassis. You will notice this cool honeycomb texture that gradually fades into a smooth matte black finish and I'm really digging it so far. And yes, it's 2018, the year where we expect every flagship gaming device to come with some sort of RGB lighting and Intel hasn't skipped that. The signature logo does light up in a subtle manner and the colors can be customized through software. But what's really interesting is that if you decide to turn off the LED logo, there are actually no traces or signs of that logo underneath the front panel, which is amazing. Moving on to the IO, I have to be honest here, this NUC has way too many ports when compared to a standard ATX motherboard or even any pre-built high-end gaming systems that I've taken a look at in the past. Seriously, at the front, you've got a high-speed UHS-1 full-size SD card reader, two USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-A ports, HDMI 2.0, Type-C Gen 2 port, and a headphone slash mic combo jack. Switching over to the rear, see that? There's still more. We've got another 3.5 mm jack, power in, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, two mini display ports, a couple of Ethernet ports, four USB 3.0 ports, and another HDMI 2.0 port. Okay. I'm gonna take a break now. Realistically speaking, I don't see myself taking advantage of all these ports at the same time, but if you're someone who's looking for a compact system with a load of IO, look no further than the Hades Canyon because, hey, they've got a full-size SD card reader. That's just impressive to me. Taking a look at the specs, this is where things get a little bit interesting. So Intel partnered up with AMD this time to create a processor that features an Intel CPU combined with Vega graphics. In this case, we're looking at the Core i7-8809G quad-core 8-threaded CPU that comes with a base clock of 3.1 gigahertz with a boost up to 4.2, along with eight megabytes of cache. The discrete graphics is the Radeon RX Vega MGH that comes with a base frequency of 1063 megahertz and a boost up to 1190, 24 compute units, graphics memory bandwidth of 204.8 gigabytes per second, and four gigabytes of HBM2 memory. This certainly looks a lot superior than Intel's integrated solution, speaking of which is still present with the i7 CPU. Remember, this Lake G architecture features an Intel CPU with integrated HD graphics with the addition of Vega M graphics all jammed uh, into a single processing unit. Really can't wait to share my gaming experience with you guys. But before we get into the performance results, I wanna briefly go over accessing the internals of this unit. It's actually pretty simple and straightforward. All you have to do is use the included Allen key to unscrew the six top panel screws. Once that's done, you can gently lift the panel upon which you'll find the LED lighting module. Carefully unplug the proprietary connector from the little PCB. Uh, there's one screw holding that plate in place, 
Once you take that out, you'll be greeted with two NVMe M.2 slots, uh, which are populated in my sample, and two sodium slots uh, that can support up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. Now, the lack of including a two and a half inch hard drive bracket could be a deal breaker for some of you out there, but I'm gonna give Intel a pass for that because uh, they've done so much to cram all that power inside this compact chassis. And of course, you have two M.2 slots to work with. Uh, what's really generous of Intel is they've actually included uh, thermal pads uh, on the top panel, so you don't have to invest on that. And that would obviously dissipate some of the heat that's coming out of those M.2 drives. Now, just like every other bare bones PC, it is important to factor in the rest of the cost that you would need to invest to get a fully functioning system. So in this case, if you're deciding to pick up the $1,000 Hades Canyon bare bones PC, uh, you would have to spend somewhere between uh, $1,300 to $1,400 to get a fully functioning system with the inclusion of a Windows 10 operating system. Uh, and the breakdown for those is basically you know, $80 to $150 on storage, and of course the rest is memory. And given the current state of memory pricing, it's it's not feasible to invest on a 32 gigabyte kit or even a 16 gigabyte kit. I mean, if you can find those kits for a relatively cheaper price, by all means, uh, it's a better option. But um, it is unfortunate that we're at a state of market right now where component prices are definitely a lot more expensive than they used to be. So um, if you see yourself spending, I mean, if you think, uh, you know, $1,400 is the max that you'd like to spend on something like this. Um, I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. Would you actually spend that much uh, to get a fully functioning system? And now to the million dollar question, is it actually worth spending that much on Hades Canon or are you much better off building yourself a gaming PC? Well, let's take a look at the performance results. But before that, I have a little bit of a surprise here because I did decide to do something uh, unique uh, in terms of, you know, finding a better use case scenario here in the studio. So let's check that out. Okay, so I decided to do something different for the Hades Canyon testing. So essentially, I wanted to build myself an all-in-one system featuring the Hades Canyon because if you think about it, uh, the size of this guy is pretty compact. It comes with, with base mounts. So you can basically just attach it to a monitor, uh, provided that it comes with uh, the base mounting uh, support system. So that's what we're looking at right now. This is the Pixio uh, PX277 uh, gaming monitor. It's uh, a 144 hertz, 1440p uh, display. For the price, I think it's it's a really good solid panel. The bezels are super thin. The only problem is that the stand is absolutely terrible uh, and it doesn't come with uh, it, the, the adjustment is not that great because you can you cannot adjust the height uh, nor tilt or do any sort of thing it just it's just it's just what it is so this is what I'll be working with let's uh, mount that Hades Canyon to this guy and, and see what we come up with okay so I did run into a little bit of an issue here so the included screws uh, that Intel provides for the base mounting bracket is a little too long for this monitor uh, because the thread mounts or the thread um, the thread holes for uh, that that are inside the panel are pretty short in length, uh, so it doesn't actually go in. The screws don't go in completely, so you do get a little bit of this wiggle uh, with the um, with the vase amount. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, but I think you know, from a positive standpoint, this could actually give us some more uh, airspace for the for the system to breathe properly. So it could come in as an advantage or a disadvantage. I don't know, but that's something to keep in mind. All right, so we finally have our DIY all-in-one desktop PC. And as you can see, uh, it's it's a work in progress. I think, I'm pretty sure there are room for improvements here, but let's kick things off with the Hades Canon by itself. So uh, it did attach just fine. I didn't run into any clearance issues or not, but just be, keep in mind that, you know, given that we have that incompatibility with the vase mounting bracket to the monitor, there is a little bit of wiggle in there, but um, I did manage to put, did manage to um, just put a little bit of cables in between so that it's just it stays intact of course as you can see i've done a pretty i mean i've done a pretty good job with with cable management here <laughs> basically taped uh, some of them on the monitor obviously it does look a little disgusting but whatever um but yeah i think it looks pretty good uh, of course we have all these cables coming out so definitely i think from an aesthetics perspective it's probably not going to look as great but um let's actually plug this in and uh and see if it actually works. So we booted into Windows without a problem. One thing to keep in mind is that this particular monitor uh, has two HDMI ports, where one of them can only support FreeSync up to 144 hertz, whereas the other port can only go as far as 75 hertz. Uh, and so you have to make sure that you've plugged um, the HDMI port or the cable to the right port to take advantage of 144 hertz at 1440p 
of course, with FreeSync enabled, which I've already done. So let's test out this guy. All right, so how did the Hades Canyon perform with my DIY all-in-one setup? Pretty darn impressive, guys. I ran a few benchmarks just to ensure stability, and kicking things off with Cinebench R15, we got a score of 866, and to put this in perspective, I did compare these results to the ASRock Desk Mini GTX, uh, featuring an i5-7600K and a GTX 1060, along with a gaming laptop from Eurocom featuring an i7-7700HQ uh, CPU with a GTX 1070 Max-Q. And as you can see, Hades Canyon takes the lead here in terms of raw CPU performance. W Prime with the multi-core test once again proves how fast uh, the new 8th generation CPUs are. So from a multitasking standpoint, the i7-8809G wouldn't break a sweat. Now, I did run some real-world tests like rendering this 1-minute 4K video using Adobe Media Encoder, and interestingly enough, the Hades Canyon took some more time to complete that task compared to the ASRock and the Eurocom notebook, which kind of makes sense in a way because CUDA acceleration with NVIDIA GPUs plays some role in faster rendering. That being said, I did manage to test both hardware and software encoding within the encoding settings, and I didn't notice a significant difference between the two uh, because on both uh, optimizations or on both settings, I did notice the CPU usage and the integrated Intel graphics utilized to its uh, fullest but I think this also has to do with lack of optimization because this is a new SoC, so perhaps we could expect a newer update within Premiere Pro to support these new uh, Intel CPUs with Vega graphics. All right, so moving on to the best part, gaming performance. Here's a look at 3 Mark Time Spy as well as Fire Strike, and as you can see, the RX Vega MGPU is not that far behind when you compare it to the GTX 1060 and the GTX 1070 Max-Q. I did run all of my gaming tests at 1080p, since pushing this GPU to 1440p really wouldn't make any sense. Starting with Battlefield 1 at 1080p set to high, Hades Canyon averaged around 72 frames per second, which is completely playable, and it's again not too far behind the other two systems featuring faster graphics cards. Overwatch at 1080p set to epic gave us around 70 frames per second. Doom again at 1080p set to ultra using the Vulcan API dished out around 89 frames per second. And finally, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Violence, which is a demanding title, did push the Vega GPU to its limits, averaging around 47 frames per second at the very high preset. The integrated cooling solution did a pretty good job keeping the i7-8809G under control, even under my 15-minute IDA64 stress test. I saw CPU temps hitting as far as 87 degrees Celsius, and I didn't notice any major throttling, which is great, because during idle, uh, CPU frequencies did run at its rated 4 to 4.2 gigahertz, which is actually uh, above its specs because the base clock is 3.1 gigahertz and it boosts all the way up to 4.2. Power consumption was also very impressive. During idle scenarios like browsing the web or watching a YouTube video, the system drew roughly 50 watts, uh, whereas with gaming, so for example, under full load uh, with the, on the Vega GPU as well as the CPU, the system drew roughly 130 watts. The GPU ran around 65 degrees Celsius while gaming, and the maximum core clock that I was able to achieve was around 1190 megahertz, which is just right on par with the specs, and this is just impressive considering the form factor. And the system was also relatively quiet during my testing. Here's how it sounds. So to conclude, I'm really impressed with Intel's Hades Canyon NUC. This thing is an absolute monster when it comes to 1080p gaming. You wouldn't have a problem hitting frame rates above 70 frames per second, uh, depending on titles at ultra settings. And what's even impressive is its thermal solution. Uh, it's relatively quiet, it stays relatively quiet, so you don't have to put in headphones or whatnot uh, to isolate the noise. Uh, again, this just it's just considering it's considering the compact nature, I'm just genuinely impressed. Not to mention the amount of ports Intel has been able to cram inside the chassis is once again mind-blowing. I don't think I've ever seen a pre-built system with this many ports. And uh, also my experience uh, pairing this up with a freezing monitor was amazing. I didn't experience any screen tearing. It was just overall a smoother gaming experience. And uh, what's even impressive is that the monitor itself by itself is not that expensive. It is $399 uh, on sale right now. And when you pair that up with something with the Hades Canyon featuring an AMD-based GPU that can support FreeSync, I think you're looking at a pretty cool, awesome, compact 
uh, gaming setup. Another thing to keep note of is if you decide to mount this behind a monitor, uh, just make sure that that monitor comes with a separate basin mounting uh, system and of course a separate stand because if your monitor is held up by a basin mount, if, if the stand itself is attached to the basin mount, uh, then attaching this at the bottom wouldn't make any sense or I don't think it's probably possible. Uh, so that was one of the downsides with this Pixie monitor. The stand, the included stand was pretty terrible. There were limited adjustments with that. I'm probably gonna end up picking up a monitor stand just so I can easily access the ports at the bottom. The last thing to discuss here is the price. Is it really targeted towards gamers out there? In a way, yes. Uh, it depends on who you really are. If you're someone who's valuing a lot of performance for the money, you're much better off building a gaming system. I mean, depending on the component prices and if they're relatively reasonable, uh, then you're much better off building a system and then uh, getting slightly extra better performance uh, compared to Hades Canyon. But if you're someone who's looking for a compact system that can comfortably push 1080p gaming, uh, I don't think there's anything in the market right now that can do anything better or perform any better than Hades Canyon because I'm genuinely, like I said, from the beginning till the end, I'm just really impressed with what Intel has done here. So that concludes this video. Let me know what you guys think about Intel's Hades Canyon NUC. Uh, are you impressed by its performance, especially the thermal results and of course, uh, just the way how it looks? Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. I'm Ibar with Hardware Connects. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.